Hey Art History, it's Mrs. Jones, and today you are going to be an artist. Today is your very first art assignment, and I wanted to give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, the couple that you see over here, this is Sarah Urist Green, and she is the host and creator of the PBS series, The Art Assignment, where contemporary artists are interviewed and give you a challenge, you the viewer. Um, her husband actually happens to be the author, John Green. Uh, maybe you have seen or read Looking for Alaska or Paper Towns, um, any of those, but they actually are from Indianapolis and Sarah is a curator at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. So kind of a little nod to our local celebrities, if you will. But you are going to start by watching independently um, this episode of the art assignments called Measuring Histories, where you are introduced to the artist, Sonia Clark. In the video, you will see that Sonia Clark is a textile artist and she uses textiles in a very interesting way to represent her cultural history. And so her assignment is going to ask you to visually represent some aspect of your history through measurement. This slide is just an excerpt from the video transcript to help you begin thinking about your personal or cultural history. It doesn't have to be something huge or monumental. It's just something that has personal significance to you. So previously, we looked at the work of William Anastasi and his subway drawings. It was a way that he documented and measured the ride that he took on the subway. Um, so in a similar way, Sonia Clark is asking you to document or measure something in your own history. So now it's time for you to begin brainstorming and planning. And whatever you choose to do or however you choose to approach this assignment, um, I'm giving you quite a bit of flexibility um, so that your solutions can be um, abounding with creativity. Think about stacking things, arranging things in a pattern. Maybe you choose to make a video. Think about what you're good at and what is natural to you um, in terms of how you solve this problem creatively. Is there something unique or interesting or important to you? Think about how this could be measured. What materials do you have available to you? And how might the material choice, the process of you arranging it, um, even the composition, help tell your story? So again, this does not have to be huge or monumental. Um, I know our artist, Sonia Clark, has some very poignant um, ideas behind her works. It doesn't have to be that deep unless you want to go there. But maybe think, um, these are just a few ideas that I had while I was thinking through this assignment. Maybe you've set a record in a sport or <laughs> heavens knows, maybe even a pie eating contest. Um, maybe you've lived in a lot of different places. Maybe you're traveling back and forth between two different households or like me, I've had several surgeries. Um, have you volunteered a lot? Are there um, hours of time spent doing something? Maybe you've donated hair even. Um, do you collect something? Have you done something athletic at a great distance? Swimming, running, biking, racing. Those are all just some ideas that popped in my own head while I was thinking through this. Now here is your instruction page and we will take a look at my example and kind of go back and forth. But again, we've already kind of talked about um, one through three here. The physical part that you're gonna be doing is you're actually going to create a couple of Google Slides. I do want you to show some process photos or maybe you choose to do a time-lapse. Um, but again, unfortunately, some people have not um, always shown integrity with different art assignments 
And so I want to make sure your work is authentically yours. So you got to be in the picture. Um, I also want to see two or three photos of your finished arrangement. And again, this could be a video um, instead of a photo. You will need to come up with your credit line information. So coming up with a title, obviously you the artist, the medium, um, it could be a video, it could be an installation, it could be a sculpture. Think about um, what that medium is and of course the date. And then you're also going to write a brief two to three paragraph summary explaining how you interpreted this assignment. And I do want you to keep in mind some of these bullet points below. Um, you are going to end up submitting this in two different ways. You're going to share the Google Slides in a shared folder on Canvas, but you're also going to um, share some snips of your Google Slides and your written explanation directly to Canvas. I never ask you students to do something that I am not willing to do myself. And the hardest part, honestly, for this assignment, I think, is going to be thinking about what you're going to do and how you're going to represent it. So you're going to have to linger in some ambiguity for a little while. Um, but the more I thought about it and brainstormed something that was important to me that I could measure was how many students I've taught over the 17 years that I've been teaching. And I basically sat down and did some math. I took an average um, of how many students I had and um, times it by how many classes I taught. And it was a little complicated because my first three years in the district, I taught both high school and elementary. Um, I thought about possible medium. Um, I definitely thought it needed to be some way somehow related to art. Um, for a while, I did contemplate actually making a piece of art. Um, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if there's some sort of app or website where you can input a number and have that many um, brush strokes or dots or um, a collage of images. I don't know. But I thought, huh, issues, time. You know, it's already going to take time to set it up and to write up everything. And also, do I have enough? What about the quantity of one material? To come up with over 4,000 individual items, I wasn't sure that I could do that. Um, then I started brainstorming about crayons because I thought, you know what? That's something I have a lot of. Not nearly 4,000, but I have a lot of crayons. <laughs> and as a kid, I always loved um, back to school shopping, getting brand new school supplies, and of course, a fresh box of crayons, perfectly sharpened. Um, so I always have associated crayons with school and also just new beginnings and possibility. Um, the more I thought about crayons, I thought, um, you know, they are a source of creativity. Um, they are vibrant and diverse in their colors. They each um, can make their own mark. And as I began to think about my crayons that I was looking at, I had a big box of them. Um, some of them, the wrappers were peeling off. Some of them were broken. Some of them, my daughter had tried to tape back together. Um, but no matter what condition they were in, they can still color and make beautiful things. And I just started thinking about that um, in relation to people because we're not all perfect. Sometimes we're patched together. We've been through some trauma or some hurt, but we are still capable of beautiful things. And I started thinking about the individual crayon versus all of the crayons. And as an individual, you know, there's only so much that you can do. But when you are working together as a group, look at the possibility. And I just think of my students as my greatest work of art, my masterpiece. So here are some example pictures. Um, and your process photos don't have to be totally formal. My daughter and I sat outside today and um, just played around. And, you know, we didn't have a perfect solution. I did not have 4,032 
crayons. <laughs> I only had maybe like a hundred crayons, I think is what we ended up counting. So I ended up thinking about actually just writing out the numbers. And Audrey and I tried a few different variations of how we should um, group and arrange. So depending on what medium you choose and how you're choosing to arrange them, you might go through a couple of drafts and that's okay. Um, you might have some um, errors that happen. Um, one of the things that Audrey and I were not thinking about that kept happening was um, there were some bugs <laughs> crawling on our masterpiece here or our dog came outside and um, messed up one of our numbers. So we had to put him inside. Um, so there may be little things that interrupt your process, but just document that that's part of your artistic process. And all of the artists that we've talked about and will talk about have encountered some of those obstacles in their process. And that's part of learning and appreciating the artistic process and what all is involved. So just go with it. Have fun. Now, here is our final slide, um, and this is where you want to definitely make sure you come up with a title and artist name and the medium and date and photograph it. Most of you will have access to a cell phone, whether it's your own or a parent, sibling or friend, um, but get creative with angles, camera angles or um using the portrait feature where things could um, blur out in the background and show that depth of field. So maybe try some different options. Um, towards the end, when we were going to start cleaning up, one of my favorite shots that I got, I thought, you know what? Here we have arranged, you know, the numbers with our crayons and everything. But I was picking up um, some of the crayons to put away and I thought, you know what? It's as if, you know, I'm holding my students in my hands, that I am helping them, you know, some of the symbolism with hands. And so I thought that that could be a cool shot um, to add, just that personal touch, my interaction with my students. Now, you guys are kind of like guinea pigs. This is the first time I've ever done this before. But as I thought through this, the things I'm really hoping to see from you are creative problem solving. This is kind of a wide open prompt. There are many different solutions to this. And while that may feel a little bit daunting to some of you, um, to me as an educator, I think it's truly exciting um, to see all of the innovative ways that you respond to this problem. So I'm really gonna be looking at your creative problem solving. I also want to look at the complexity of your thought and design, because let's be honest, guys, um, it would be really easy to just, you know, pull out a drawer and throw a bunch of stuff down and take a picture. I can tell if you have put thought into your idea and your design. Remember, you are an artist. This is your role in this project. And I'm really wanting you to experience the artistic process because, again, in this art appreciation class, we're trying to learn about the different mediums, techniques, processes, brainstorming, and final display of work. And the more we understand how much goes into that, the more we can appreciate it when we see it done really, really well. So I'm also going to be looking at your artistic and professional documentation of the project. Again, be thinking about um, recording or photographing your work in a professional way. And I will also be looking, of course, at your written response, that you are being thoughtful and reflective and including um, the information that I've asked for. And then lastly, of course, that have you correctly submitted everything. Have fun, guys. Good luck, artists. I cannot wait to see what you come up with.